restless, so give me something to do. Yeah, I can't stay here because I need to dance. Jump, jump around and show 'em how I move. Uh oh oh. Uh. Everybody will be on me. Wanna join me when I take a shot? I'll be the center of attention, like I was some kind of astronaut. Party tear the ceiling down in front of everybody. If someone's pouring up a drink, I'm calling shoddy. I'm gonna find a crowd so I can put it on me. Swinging from the chandeliers, I won't be sorry. I got a feeling I'm gonna crash into this party. I'm just a match of dope, waiting to happen like. I'm just an accident waiting. Ooh, ooh,
shooting for the moon tonight. I got a feeling I'm gonna crash some stupid party. Tear the ceiling down in front of everybody. If someone's pouring up a drink, I'm calling shot. I'm just an accident way to do Okay, I have to admit, it has been a very long time since I've done this. I don't even have everything set up the way that I like to have it set up when we do these, but... You know, I knew, I just, I figured that it has been... Oh my God, it's it's been over a month since we went live. I've got my trusty Starbucks here to help me through it. I will say that that for the most part, Streaming is not like riding a bicycle. You literally can forget how to do all this. Um, and I'm kind of in that process right now where it's like, what? But we're going to get it. We'll, be, we'll get there. Everything will be fine. And we'll get there. It's just you are going to have to give me a little bit because it has been a while. Uh, I've got all the chats pulled up here so I can see everybody in the chat rooms i think we if if i've done this correctly um we should be live on facebook youtube twitch and linkedin of course i could have done it completely wrong and we're not live on any of them that's possible as well so how is everybody how's everybody been i know it's been a while i didn't announce this earlier today like okay, we're gonna we're gonna go live tonight. We're gonna do this. I didn't I didn't say anything. Um, it was literally an impulse thing. I was on my way back from Starbucks just a few minutes ago, and I was like, you know, we have not gone we have not gone live in a in a very 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 long time. And then then there was the part of me that was like, okay, number one, you got to see if you can even still do this. If you st- and so it's like okay. Um, those of you that follow the YouTube channel, the Facebook, or follow me in general, you know that I've been creating a lot of content. Um, we are now taking the the podcast, which is what we used to do here on, what was it, Tuesday? It's been so long, I don't even remember when the hell we used to do it. I think it was uh, Tuesday nights. <laughs> Tuesday or Wednesday nights. That was the whole thing of the podcast. Well, now because of some other things that I'm working on, it's got to be more frequently. So now the podcast is not live every week, but it's pre-recorded 
and it goes to YouTube. You can watch the video version or you can get the audio version of the podcast anywhere you listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, radio.com, any of those places. So since I started doing that, we've not been, we've not been live since then. And I'm almost positive that it's been over a month, but here's what I want to start doing. I want to start doing one live stream like a week. And it's not going to be so much like the, the podcast format that we were doing before. I just want this live stream just to get in here and hang out with you guys. Because um, while I enjoy doing the podcast the way that I've, I've been doing them, and it's great, it is tough doing three days a week. I'll, I'll be real honest with you with doing the audio version, the video version and all that. It, it is tough. Um, but I miss the interaction with you guys. I miss being one-on-one with you guys in a live situation. Um, and so that's what I want to try to, to kind of, you know, restart up in, in doing the live thing. I was going to go on and I might still later tonight, maybe go on, play some Fortnite. I haven't gamed in, in almost two months. I haven't played or done any of that. I've been so focused and busy on, on all of the, the content and stuff that, that I'm creating. We've also got some pretty big things that are coming up this fall. I thought I was going to be able to talk about them last week. I can't talk about it yet. Um, but I, I am pumped up and I am excited about it. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to hop on tonight to see if you guys, if there was anybody on. Uh, a lot of you guys have been sending emails and, and things like that about some of the different uh, things that we're talking about on the podcast. So if anybody that's been watching those videos uh, happens to see that we're on tonight, I thought, what the hell, uh, here's your shot. You can uh, ask questions. You can comments, whatever. You got, uh, let's see, Zapper 2K is in here. Decoy's in here. They're all watching on Twitch. Um, and I know we've got some people on YouTube uh, that are uh, watching as well. And you know what? I haven't even checked LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a new, is a new thing um, to be able to go live on. And I, I don't even know if we're live on there or not. So let me check that out and see. I don't even know if we are or not. I'll tell you how LinkedIn illiterate I am. I don't even know how to pull up my own damn profile. I know how to post stuff. But I don't, oh, maybe that's it. No, that's not it either. I, I don't know. Who gives a damn about LinkedIn anyway? That's kind of the way I feel about it. It's just another one of those places that everybody's telling you, you got to put stuff. And it's like, God dang. All the places we have to put stuff. Decoy says, I've been dealing with life, but streaming almost every day. That's awesome, man. I have not been on. I got on today. I was in the recording studio. I'm working on uh, producing a project for a, an, an artist up in Chicago. And I, I kind of had like a five-minute thing where I wasn't really doing anything. So I, I clicked on Twitch and I turned it on. for. It's the first time in probably two months that I've even turned Twitch on. It, it, it's... It's just been insane, which is, it's, it feels odd to me because we, I was on it so often and streaming, you know, every day. It, and it just, uh, it, it felt weird getting back on. It, it, it was one of those things where, like I said, it is not like riding a bicycle. I was like, so many things are changing. They're updating so many things. I didn't even, it's like, I didn't even know what I was doing. I've let all my subs lapse. Like it, not just people that sub to me. I mean, why would you sub to me? I haven't created any content in two months for you, but um, on Twitch, but it's like I, I all my other that people that I was subscribed to, so I got to go back in and and re up all those subscriptions. But I, I have at least I, I have I have managed to still figure out how to get all the equipment to work. So that's I mean that's a major plus in my category and in my column plus one I'm winning. Everything still works. And I'm almost thinking about changing everything once again because I went and looked at some uh, office space yesterday that I'm thinking about uh, picking up. And so this room, this this studio uh, would be going over there, but then also the recording studio would be moving as well. 
So yeah, it, it's just, you know, it's just nuts with, with everything that's going on. And I, I really am looking forward to being able to, to share with you guys what I'm working on um, that we're going to be doing this fall. Um, yeah, Zapper, I agree. Sub to Steve. I, that's why I want to start doing this more often. We, we were in a really good swing of things with doing the live stream every week. And then, it, then I started doing the podcast three days a week. And, and it is, it's just been, man, it's been nuts. It's been crazy. I ain't going to lie to you. We, we just got back from vacation, me and the family. I took the family out to LA because I haven't taken, you know, I'm there all the time, but I haven't taken the family in, I think it was seven years, they told me. So it's been a little bit, a little while. Um, and then we always go down to Orange Beach, down to the Gulf for a week. And uh, we're doing that next week. So, and I've been so busy that it's, I, I, it's almost like the LA vacation didn't happen. It came and it went and we had a great time, went to Universal. I'd never, as many times as I've been out there, I've never been to Universal, but we went to Universal. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the, 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 it's like, I'm, I hate to even say kids cause they're so big now, but we all had a blast. I actually rode all the roller coasters with my youngest daughter and we just had a blast and we hung out for a week and we didn't worry about what we were eating. We didn't worry about how many calories. We just, we just kind of let our hair down, had some fun. I took them to see all the sights. My daughter, my youngest daughter, Chloe, I, you know, you think you know everything about your kids. I didn't know this. So she's evidently wanted, and this sounds like so much of a flex, and it, it is not in any way a flex because it kind of shocked me too. But the one place she couldn't wait to get to was the Gucci store on Rodeo. Because, I mean, I know that's all a thing now. All the kids, you know, want to have all the, the name brand stuff. What's new? That's never changed. But her, the highlight of her trip, was we went, she bought a belt that she, and she knew the exact belt she wanted with the exact buckle on it, marched right into that. I, I didn't, she's real big on wanting things. She never pulls the trigger. She won't ever actually do it. Um, and she pulled the trigger and she bought a, a Gucci belt with her own money. And uh, I got a little, I got a picture of her outside the Gucci store, the Gucci logo, holding her little bag with the Gucci. So she's happy. She's Gucci. Um, didn't do an overwhelming amount of shopping like we normally, like I normally do when I'm out there or last time we went with them, but we, it was just kind of a laid back, relaxing trip. I drove them around. The idea has been tossed back and forth of moving to LA. Um, I know eventually that's where I want to be. Um, I'm kind of over Nashville. We can get into that. Um, I just love Los Angeles. I love Southern, Southern California. I love the South Bay area, which is where I stay when I go. Um, a lot of meetings and things like that are more in the, you know, Hollywood, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Wilshire area. Um, but I like the South Bay area. You're El Segundo, Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, um, Palos Verdes, Rachel's Palace, all that area down there. Love that. And we spent a lot of time just driving around and looking because it's like if you... You think you're going to move somewhere? It's like you you think you want to you think you know where you want to go, but we spent a lot of time driving around and you know looking at other areas. We we drove up to Malibu and Calabasas, and we just kind of made a big loop one day, all through the valley in Sherman Oaks, uh, Encino, that whole area, um, which I like, but it's always at least ten degrees hotter in the valley than it is in South Bay. So on a day like it's 74, 75, it's 85, 90 degrees in the valley, if not hotter. And it feels hotter too, because you don't have that, that cool breeze blowing. Uh, but, you know, this trip was kind of a lot of that. Um, it was, I did a little bit of business while I was out there, but not much. Because um, I just wanted it to be an opportunity to, to just kind of hang loose. Awesome Ray Music's watching on YouTube. Says, love your podcast, bro. Man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I you comment on a lot of the videos, man, and I, I appreciate it. You you uh, you seem to really watch them and get something out of it, which I hope everybody is. I hope you are because what I'm going to do this fall is going to blow your mind. Um, so if you think you're getting something now, just just wait till wait till fall comes. Uh, but yeah, it was a good trip. It was a really good trip, and and we did a we did a lot of running. 
while we were out there. It was it was not like the typical vacation vacation. We we drove. We went down to uh, we met my wife's parents in Palm Springs. One of the days we literally drove four and a half hours that day for a thirty minute lunch, uh, which was fine. It was cool. Um, the Range Rover they gave us broke down and had to get a different rental car. That was interesting. Um, so it was just, it, you know, it's kind of like the old, the, the, the whole Griswold family vacation. I mean, it was, it was awesome. But the last time we went there, like I said, it was seven, eight years ago. You know, my kids were half the age they are now. And, you know, it was interesting seeing them now being able to do a lot of the stuff that they couldn't do when we were there before. But I, I know that it was much needed, but it was also, like I said, very, we were busy. We, we ran the entire time that, that we were gone. And uh, this next week going down to uh, going down to the beach is just all about doing nothing. Like literally nothing. Like, I mean, I will walk down to the beach. Our, the condo is, is uh, on the beach. So it overlooks the nice balcony out there with all kinds of furniture that is over the sand and then there's the water. So we'll walk from there down to the beach, back upstairs, ride the elevator back upstairs. That's it. That's all we're going to do for seven days. We're going to leave Saturday morning. It takes about seven hours to get down there from here. And we'll be down there through the next Saturday. And uh, so that's, that, that's going to be my time to just severely decompress and, and hang out. Of course, I, saying that like I'm not going to do work. Of course, I'm going to be working. Uh, but it's different. Anytime you're working on the beach, it's not like you're working. That's, that's it's what it feels like to me anyway. Shane Stevens, Ohio, that's where it's at, brother. You will miss the seasons on the West Coast. I, I'm not going to miss the seasons. Although I did, Shane, I love Shane to death. We, we, I just produced his record a couple of months ago. He is also signed to our artist development company. If you have not listened to Shane Stevens, you are missing out. I'm telling you right now, if you like Southern Roots, uh, Bruce Springsteen with a little more rock, Eric Church, if you like that kind of thing, Southern Rock, you're going to love Shane Stevens' band. The EP, the album, it's, it's available everywhere you can, you can uh, buy or stream music. Please go check it out. I know he would appreciate it. We just shot the new v, uh, video. I was in Ohio, and I, I don't have anything against Ohio. I actually liked Ohio. I didn't think I would like Ohio. I liked Ohio. So not not a bad place. I've been to worse places. I've been to Mississippi. <laughs> no offense against anybody living in Mississippi, but Ohio was cool. We shot Shane's video for Bear Swamp Road. It's out on YouTube. You can go check it out too. You can see Ohio for yourself. Uh, Charles Thornton says, new listener and subscriber, first time live. I've enjoyed everything I have seen and heard and excited to see what's to come. I want to learn all I can from you. Charles, thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Yeah, we used to do this live every week. And and I've just been so busy, I haven't been able to do it. So you're getting in on a good time. This is the first live broadcast in live stream. And it's, it's been, I know it's been a month. It, it's been at least a month. It may have even been two. I have to go back and check. And I was so out of practice, I don't even know the damn description down here says episode 29. And I, because I, I'm out of practice with the live stream so much that I forgot to go in and change the title. That, that is how crazy that I've gotten. That I, it's like I didn't even remember to do that. And YouTube is not like Twitch where you can change it on the fly. I don't think we're about to find out because that's bugging me to, to, to know that it says that. And you, I wish YouTube would, would please stop pushing the new YouTube Studio Beta on me. For Christ's sake, please. I like the classic. I know it. I know my way around it. I know where things are. Please stop making me choose the beta. That's just a little frustration on my part. Come on, I'm, I'm hitting the right thing. Oh, there we go. We'll see. We'll see if it, if it allows me to, to change. Oh, yes, it does. We're going to change it. Let's see if it lets me. 
Well, let me save it. Let me just hit enter. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Maybe it will. Let's see if it, oh, it did. It changed it on the fly. Look at that. Um, Decoy says, any updates on what's to come for Team Guy Jen? Um, sort of. Um, I am shell because of this other thing that I'm working on, I've had to shelve it until the fall as well. Does it mean that there's not things going on and we aren't getting some stuff ready? We are. Uh, but I've just kind of put a temporary hold on doing anything new. Uh, I did meet with a marketing company out in LA to talk with them about strategy and some different things, both with, with, uh, guy gen esports, but also with this new thing. And, uh, they're going to be, they're going to be working with me on both. Uh, and they had some great, they had some really great ideas, uh, that they're going to bring to the table. But yes, um, my plan for guy gen is to, and I'm not saying that it won't happen before this because y'all know how I am. I'm, I get something and it's like a, like a dog with a bone. Um, it may be sooner, but it's probably going to be more so like somewhere in the October, November range, which I guess technically might be winter, but not fall. Uh, but it's, it's getting completely revamped, re revamped and, and it, just other things coming. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, because I miss, I miss messing around with it a lot, to be honest with you. I, I miss it a lot, but I want to do it right. There are a couple of you guys, Decoy, you're one of them. Uh, Zap's one of them. Remade's one of them. You guys have, have helped out and done things. It's been very difficult to get other people that do other things that are necessary to make that organization successful. It's been very difficult getting people on board, even paying people. I'm not talking about getting people to do shit for free. I'm talking about, I'm tr I've tried to pay people to do things that I need them to do, and you just can't count on anybody. Um, that's been the holdup to this point with Guy Gen Esports. That has been the only holdup, um, is finding the right people to do the right things that need to be done in order for it to grow the way that I want it to grow and the way that I know you guys want it to grow. Um, so if we, if we can't do it right, then I don't want to do it at all. And I am, I am, I am headstrong about making sure that it's done right. So if I have to pull back a little bit in order to, to make it right, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's kind of what we're doing right now, but stay with me. Awesome things are to come. We've got some really good things planned out and I'll be talking with a few of you guys about it way before October, November, because I, I want you guys to be a part. The guys that that were really there, you know, in, in the beginning, I want you guys to be a part of it. It's not dying. It's not going anywhere. If anything, it's going to be bigger and better, and it's going to be done the right way. Um, it's just uh, part of it, and this is the same thing with 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 music business. It's, it's all, it's so geographical. As you know, I tell artists all the time, people think, Chunky, you're in that group too. Uh, that you've got to move to Nashville, and it, this and it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Launching an esports team from Nashville, where this is just not where things like that happen, has proven to be difficult. Even though we're a major city now, we're a major tech city. It's just it's you know the streaming and the gaming. And it's just esports is just not the thing here right now. I mean. We're getting a soccer team and all of that, and they're saying we're going to get the next Major League Baseball franchise. But it's it's just even though we're a major city, it's just it's just not there. So it's going to require long distance working relationships, working with people on the West Coast um, that have a little bit more of an understanding. Um, and I and I think too, I wasn't planning on talking about this at all, but I, one of the things that really got me thinking, I had kind of backed off and slowed down a little bit was, uh, but when I really was like, you know what, I'm going to put the brakes on, was this whole uh, FaZe Clan Tifu lawsuit. And, and I think we're just at the beginning of this thing because the, the industry is at such an infancy right now that what I've learned when you get into the nitty gritty and you get your fingers down in the dirt of esports, you start to realize that nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. This is everybody, even FaZe, 
uh, 100 Thieves. It looks like it's organized. They are flying by the seat of their pants because it's uncharted territory. They're trying to apply music business model, uh, film business model. They're trying to take pieces of, of other entertainment industries and apply them to this, and it's not working real well because it's a completely different thing. You know, in the music business, you've got three or four revenue sources. You've got album sales, merch sales, ticket sales, and endorsements, songwriter royalties. That's, that, that's, that's, I mean, are there a couple, they, everything way you can make money under the music business falls under one of those five things. In esports, it's unfreaking limited. And for people who are going to own organizations, they're going to pay streamers and pay professional players. There are so many different revenue sources and revenue streams and partnerships that have to be made that it's very tough to keep, you know, like they've done with Tifu and trying to, okay, we're going to get a piece of this, a piece of this. They don't know everything that they want a piece of. That's why his contract was so slated, uh, slanted in one direction. And, and I can't blame FaZe, in all honesty. Was it wrong? It's absolutely wrong. But guys, I'm in the music business, okay? I see slanted contracts every single day. It is always slanted towards the record company. Always. You're never going to get a contract that is pro-artist because the label's the one putting up all the money. They're the one taking the chance. They're the one spending the money on the resources and staff. And, and it's like a credit card. When you want to sign a record label, a record, to a record label, a record label is nothing but a credit card, period. And there are payments that come due. And when the record label is going to, to put down that credit card on your behalf and spend money for you, they want to know that that money is going to come back because they're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. They're doing it because they think they can make money off of you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Do I think it's a bullshit model in, in the industry, in the world, in the te technologically advanced society that we live in today? It's archaic. Because number one, it doesn't take that much money to make money in the music business anymore. Now, to be superstar status, yes, that takes a lot. It takes a, lar a credit card with a large available balance. Um, but back to the Tifu situation, I, I, I can't blame FaZe for the, was it a shitty contract? Yeah, it's a shitty contract. But they had something he wanted and he signed it. Now he's made something of himself over the last year, and it's like, oh, I don't want to be under that contract anymore. I, and I understand that too. Both parties are at completely different places in their careers and lives that they were a year ago. Most contracts, even in the music business, are for a certain time period, and then you can renegotiate those contracts at that time. But... The fact of the matter is, is the reason that contract is the way that it is, is because the people running the esports business don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. They don't. They're trying to apply other models in other businesses to the esports, and it's just too big. The, 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 you've got the streaming aspect, you've got the royalty aspect, you've got the subscribers aspect, you've got the endorsement aspect. It, it, it is... There is so much that everybody's just scratching their head and in the, in these organizations are trying to get these young kids to sign up because they know they're going somewhere. And that's the whole music business model. You sign, you, it's like a stock. Y'all have heard me say this before. The idea to make money in the stock game is to buy a stock low and sell it high. That is business 101. Buy it cheap, sell it expensive. But... Esports is so big that they are having a really difficult time right now getting it organized. So whenever the, the biggest of the big in the game are having an issue, when I'm trying to start an organization and reach out to people for help, y'all don't understand the level of people that I was talking to that were like, Steve, we would love to help you, but we haven't fucking figured it out yet. And, all, and I'm talking way up there, way up there. And I'm talking teams and organizations and people that you would think, oh, they, they've got this figured out. They don't. They have about 30, 40% of it figured out. And so that's when I realized, okay, I've either got to wait and see whatever funnel and, and method and all of this that these people come up with 
and follow that method or I've got to create my own. I have never been a follower. So I'm in the process of creating my own esports organization and business model. That's why we've backed off and we're going to relaunch under a completely different method. And it takes people. It's just like anything else in the music business. You guys have heard me talk about this. You, you guys out there that are, that are artists that are trying to do this on your own and you keep wondering why you're failing. I, I told somebody the other day, I am perfectly capable. Like if I had a leak under my house and a, and a pipe burst, knock on wood, I don't want that to happen. If a pipe burst, I am perfectly capable of hopping in my F-250, driving up to Home Depot, buying the PCV, PCV or whatever it is, in the PCV, yeah, PCV pipe. I can buy the glue that comes and it's like that dark purple color. I can cut it, I can measure it, I can cut it to the length that I want. I can glue it and I can stick it together and I can try to make sure that it's good for doing it myself. PVC, that's it, thank you, PVC. Or I can call a fucking plumber. Steve Freeman calls plumbers. There's a meme for you. Uh, I'm not going to fix it myself. The same thing can be applied to your career, whether you're, it's an artist career or whether it's a Twitch streamer or building out your YouTube channel. Quit trying to fix the problem yourself because you're incapable of it. And here's why. You're the creative. You spend so much time on the creative and making the creative right and building the creative you don't know anything about the business side of it or the mechanics of how to take that creation and, and make money with it. That often intersects with the problem that artists don't have any money. That's where, that's, that's where it all falls apart. You should not be doing it yourself. There was a video, and I've got a blog article, and I'm probably going to do a video on this because I think it's important. There was a guy that put out a video on uh, YouTube, I believe it was today or yesterday, and it was titled, How to Speed Up Your Music Career, Things I Wish I Knew. I watched it, and I'm like, this is complete bullshit. And, and I find so many, uh, I'm just saying you guys, I'm not meaning Charles or, or Ray or anybody else. Y'all fall for that. And you think, oh, Adam said it, so it's bullshit. The things he talks about in that video are bullshit. You want to know how to speed up your music career? It's impossible to speed up your music career. There are certain bases you've got to hit. Case in point, very rarely in the music business do you hit a home run. You hit singles. You hit a single, you get on base. Hit another single, you go to second base, and you work your way around. There are no fast tracks. There are no speeding it up. There's none of that. And, and that is one, one of the reasons that I have just increased my content creation here lately, and I'm trying to put out so much information because when I stopped creating and I started looking around, I was I didn't have to scratch my head anymore and go, why are people having, I know why you guys are having a hard time because you're listening to people who are full of fucking shit. They don't know what they're talking about. There's, they're, they're putting out hundreds of videos on YouTube talking to you about how to make it in the music business when they've never fucking made it in the music business. The only way they've made it is by making videos telling you how to make it in the music business. They've done nothing in the mainstream that says they have any success whatsoever. They don't have any credits on any major records or anything like that to, to substantiate what they're trying to teach you, but you guys are soaking it up. You're trying to apply it. That I appreciate. You're attempting to apply it, and it doesn't work, and it doesn't work because it's wrong. This fall, we're going to change all of that. And I'm going to do my damnedest from right now until then, until I launch this new thing. And even then, moving forward, I am going, I'm watching every YouTube video I can possibly watch, and I'm going to correct the misinformation that you guys are given. That is my goal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of switching gears now from putting out my own way, and here's what I know works, and advising you guys, because right now, the more and more I look out there, I'm seeing that you guys are inundated with incorrect and misinformation. 
You're told to do this, 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 and this. And it's all predicated on these stupid assholes on YouTube that sit around and jack off to Gary V all day. And they go, how can I make that thing that Gary V just said translate to the music business? Because that's what my YouTube channel is, is based on, even though I have absolutely no fucking credibility in the business whatsoever, but I've got 100,000 subscribers on YouTube because I've been here since the beginning and all that. I'm sick of it all. I am sick and tired on behalf of you guys, the creatives, being taken advantage of, being given misinformation, wrong information, and this whole rah, 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 Gary V type shit. Fuck it. That is not how you make it in the music business. You don't also make it in the music business by watching and listening to me. You make it in the music business or anything else in life by taking the advice and applying it. But you have to know that where you're getting your advice is credible. And just because somebody has 117,000 subscribers on their channel does not mean that they are credible. Go, to, go try to find one artist you've ever heard of that they've worked with. Can't find it. They do a whole video, or and this is several of them. I'm not just picking on one guy, but there are several. How to get your music in TV and film. Really, what was the last fucking TV show you had a song in? I'll wait. What was the last film you had a, uh, had a song in that you wrote or produced? I'll wait. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Be very leery of people who say they have all of the answers. I will be the first one to tell you, I do not have all of the answers. I still, after 25 years in this business, learn something every day. Why? Because this business changes every week. I tell you guys the methods that I use that are successful for other artists I work with. I know what works because I've done it every way and I've done it wrong every way. When I say don't spend $2,600 to go on to this, and I'm not gonna say her name, we've already had an exchange, uh, to this particular lady's songwriting camp, I'm telling you don't spend $2,600 for a reason. You're wasting your money, not because I win, I don't have to go, but I, I I've, I've know people that have gone, I know what they got out of the experience. And to me, the person that's heading the class doesn't have the credibility as a songwriter to lead a songwriting camp. So much of that is important. And I know what happens. I know you guys get excited. I know that, that you want to go far as fast as humanly possible. And so that causes you to jump on things that you might not normally jump on. But guys, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. I am getting tired of hearing, if I had a dollar, shit, if I had a dime, for every time somebody said this to me, I'd never have to do anything the rest of my life. And that is, I wish I had found you sooner. I wish I had found you before I did X, Y, Z. I wish I had listened to you before I did this. If I had a dime for every time somebody has said that to me. Now, again, I'm not saying that to puff me up. I've made wrong decisions. I've made wrong decisions on behalf of artists. The, the thing that we have to realize and really take stock of is, I've said this in videos before, you, you can't force a round peg into a square hole or vice versa. Every situation is unique. Everybody's road is unique. Everybody's journey is different. The strategies and methods that it takes to help one person be successful may not work for the next guy or girl or band. But I also know that, that it's in knowing what to avoid that can lead you when you know you're, because if you, I mean, think about this way. If you've ever gone the wrong direction somewhere and then later you start and you're driving and you, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I made this mistake once before. This does not take me where I want to go. I need to go a different way. That's a value that comes only with experience. 
And I got into a debate a couple of weeks ago with somebody that were like, oh, oh, you know, you're selling the dream. And I'm like, no, I don't sell the dream. What I am is the toll booth guy. I know where and how to get there. But if you want to get there, I'm the guy in the toll booth. It didn't come free for me. It's not going to come free for you. I haven't spent 25 years in this business learning and sacrificing to just show you the way for free. Why? Same reason that Starbucks doesn't give away coffee. And you can't walk into Kroger and just fill your fucking bags up and walk out. Same reason you can't go over to a car lot and say, give me the keys to that one and just drive off. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm getting, if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I, I get pretty worked up over this because I have been watching these different guys' videos and I'm listening to the advice that you're, they're giving you. And, I'm, and then I go, no wonder so many of these people are lost. You're given so much conflicting and misinformation that it just, it kills me. And what I would like to see people do is educate themselves more and know the difference of when you're watching somebody's video or you're listening to somebody's podcast. Are you hearing somebody's opinion on how they think it is? Or are you listening to their experience because they've done it? I mean, you can think about that in terms of like news organizations. Remember, I mean, I'm, I'm 40, almost 43, but I can remember when the evening news was respected. That's where you got the facts. What you think about the facts, that's up to you. We don't talk about that. But all the news is anymore is opinionated journalism. They don't report the facts. They tell you what they think about what they think might be going on. And then half the time, they just flat out lie to you. And I'm not talking about fake news. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give a damn what your political affiliation is. I don't have a political affiliation. But I'm smart enough to know when somebody's being opinionated and when somebody's being factual. And the people that are being factual have facts to back up their facts. I, I did a, I think I mentioned it in the podcast, one of the other videos that this guy put up was how to get your music in TV shows and films, of which everything I've researched about him, I can't find a single place where anybody's ever said or he's ever said or been credited with having a song in a television show or film. I'll just throw that out there. But the method that he was talking about was getting on IMDb and going into the credit section of the different films or television shows and finding, he said... Find who the music supervisor are and the sound supervisor. Okay, the sound supervisor has absolutely nothing to do with the music or score in a TV or film. The sound supervisor is the person that's dealing with the sound effects. And, and sometimes they will have to deal with like the, the post-processing and, and the post-editing with, with the overall sound of it. But they don't pick the music, anything like that. So do, please, don't bung sound editors. Okay, those are your special effects guys. Those are your sound effects and all that. So point A, don't bug the sound advisor. They have nothing to do with it. The music supervisor is the person that is responsible for gathering the songs for television shows and movies. And then they take those to the producers and they have to be approved. Um, but he was saying, go into IMDb, look for those people's information, then look up their contact information from what you find there, and then send them an email and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. Um, I have a song or two that I think are great for this specific thing. Unless you want to never have a relationship with that music supervisor, that's what you do. Guys, you don't ever do that. You don't... It, you don't ever reach out to somebody and provide them with something if they didn't ask you for it. Now, there are ways to get to those people. You don't start there. That person has an assistant. 
the proper way to do that is find out who that person's assistant is or with that movie company or that production company, find out where the entry point is. Work your way up the ladder. Contact that person's assistant and say, I understand it's not professionally kosher for me to contact them directly and send them songs. I'm contacting you to ask you what is the best way to submit material for consideration. Because it's that person's job as the gatekeeper between you and the person making the decision. That's their whole existence. That's their job. They will tell you how to go through the system appropriately to submit your music. If they don't, stay on them about it because that is their job. You don't ever look up a music supervisor and contact them directly, ever, under any circumstances. If you do, I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the time, number one, they will not listen to your stuff. Number two, if they do get it, they are writing your name down, but they're writing it down in the book that says don't ever use anything from this person because they didn't follow proper procedure. I know we, we all live in this, do whatever you got to do. If you can't, if, if you knock on the door and nobody answers, kick the door down. Well, there's a place in time for that. When it comes to your career, it is about following procedure. Do things the right way. Does the train move a little slower? Yes, but you're doing it the appropriate way. And I can promise you that people will appreciate you doing it the right way over you doing it the wrong way every single time. And I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. That is not at all what I wanted to go live about tonight. Um, but I, I wanted to share that because I have been spending a lot of time lately watching a lot of videos to see what's out there, what's being said, you know, what kind of information are you guys getting? Who are you getting it from? And I, like I said, I'm just completely flabbergasted and blown away at the information that you guys are given. And sure, it makes for it makes for a great YouTube video. You know, it, it, it makes for a great, you know, getting a couple thousand views here and there. Then you chop it up into micro content and they're preaching it to you on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and everywhere. I get it. I'm doing the same thing. But my focus is not on inundating you with content. My focus is giving you correct information. That's the difference. And I hope that I'm doing that. I, I hear from you guys that are watching the videos and listening to the podcast, and it sounds like I am. I get so busy creating content that a lot of times I don't have a lot of time to hear the feedback or even see the feedback. I've been trying to get on YouTube and answer every comment. I've, I, I, I get lackadaisical in that, and I, get it and I, and I don't always do it. Um, but I'm trying to get to a point where I'm going to now start reserving like an hour, you know, a couple hours a week where I can sit down and respond to comments. Because you guys ask a lot of questions in the comments. A lot of times those comments, they wind up being topics of the podcast because you guys ask great questions. And that's, that's, that's always a good thing. I always love getting good questions. Speaking of, if anybody's got any, I'll open the floor. I cannot believe I remembered how to set all this stuff up and actually do it. I'm actually proud of myself. I am going to try to start doing, going, going back to doing one live show a week. I don't know when it will be. We're approaching NFL season, so it can't be Monday night or Thursday night. I know that. Um, so it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday. It will not be Friday. So it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. What's the best places to visit in Nashville? I need a list. My cousins are going there and want recommendations. Um, if they're into music type stuff, decoy, I mean, you know, you got to tell them to go to the go to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Go to the Musicians Hall of Fame. That's another good one. Um, you got the Grand Ole Opry. That whole Broadway tourist trap down there, a lot of stuff to see there. Um, 
Bridgestone Arena's right there. Lot tons and tons and tons and tons of bars and clubs. Uh, then you've got like Opry Mills, the mall out there where the new Grand Ole Opry is. Um, food wise, you got to hit Loveless Cafe. I mean, that's it's it's just you got to eat there. Uh, my friends own uh, Martin's Barbecue, so if you're a barbecue, I mean, y'all are from, is he from Kansas City where y'all are? I mean, y'all know a thing or two about barbecue, but. Martin's Barbecue is a great place to eat here. Um, Pancake Pantry, there's always a line around the block to get in there. Not because it's great, just because it's kind of a thing. Um, Hattie B's Hot Chicken, of course. You know, that's been on all the Food Network shows and stuff like that. You want to try that. Um, I think they do tours and stuff of the the Tennessee Titans Stadium. Um, you know, it, there's all that kind of stuff. It, it's It's... Tons and tons and tons of live entertainment, you know, 24 hours a day. So they'll, they can find lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. If they stay anywhere near downtown, then they're within walking distance of, you know, 95% of what you would want to do. And it's just kind of going out and, and exploring, you know. Anybody else got any questions? I'm trying to see. I don't know if this thing's feeding all the comments from all the different areas through if i if i i'm thinking i think last time it was facebook that it wasn't delivering comments to i don't know if anybody's watching on facebook or not probably not trump's live so i'm sure facebook is lit up with people watching trump my buddy billy falcon is live too what is is it tuesday it's tuesday so he's holding church i don't know if anybody's watching on facebook or not I am, I'm actually thinking about uh, thinking about getting on and playing some Fortnite here in a little bit. I haven't played Fortnite in, well, I, I think the last time I played Fortnite, no, the last time I played Fortnite, I, I was not streaming. I just got on and was playing. But that's been, it's been a month ago. It's been easily a month ago. So I might get on there and actually do that because I haven't done it in a while. Prop hunt on prop hunt is on creative. I've seen some videos of people doing that. That looked pretty interesting. Not that I was amazing or anything before, but I can only imagine I'm going to suck getting back on and just playing for the first time. Haven't played in a while. We'll see how that goes. I still don't know if we're live on LinkedIn or not. If anybody wants to try to pull up my LinkedIn profile, let me know. If anybody's watching on YouTube, y'all got a question, just pop it in the little chat right down there. Same thing on Twitch. And I think on Facebook, you do it where you're like making a comment like you normally would. Oh, y'all want to see something? Check this out. I mean, y'all may not care, but let me see if I can do this. I haven't worked all this stuff in so long. Let me see if I can find this and pull it up. The first round, let me see. Maybe this is it. Let me see. Oh, here it is. Let me see. I think I've got it set to show this one. Now, I'm sh- <laughs> I'm going to show you this not because I want you to buy it because it's not even going to be available for you to buy. But I've told a lot of you that it's I'm I'm launching a clothing line, and I've I got that going at the same time. But I got some. Uh, where is the thing with browser? Yeah, there it is. So I got some of the mock-ups of some of the the first stuff that's coming. So I'm pretty pumped up about that. Like I said, I, these are just for my personal use right now. I'm going to get and see how I like them, see how I like the shirts. 
the way that they fit them because they will eventually be private label. Like I'll have my own label in there. We're going to do some really cool stuff. We got some really cool designs that's, you know, like have unsigned with some really cool stuff in it. A lot of it's going to have to do with empowerment and indie artist stuff and independent minded, independent thinking and, you know, maverick kind of stuff. So I, I, I thought I'd show you all that. Like I said, you can't buy it. There, I, I, I think I ordered 40 of them in my own size from a variety because I mean, you know, the whole thing, why? I mean, like right now I'm wearing, so I'm advertising Under Armour. Why am I advertising something for Under Armour? They ain't giving me shit ever. Spent a lot of money with them, but they don't give me anything. I'm going to do sweatshirts and hoodies and hats and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some cool stuff. All right. As far as I can see, I haven't seen anybody on now. Now that's telling me something. What is that telling me? Somebody was liking something from earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've still got some decoy. I've got, I've got some. I just got to. My thing is, I got to remember to go to the post office because I oh remade another one as well in a different size, and I just I can't remember to go to the post office. I almost forgot, and I realized it today, and I called. I got to go tomorrow. I had to take the Jeep today because I'm having to have front brakes put on the Jeep. Um, but I was digging through looking for my, my ID for something, and I realized my conceal and carry handgun permit expires. It's been eight years. It, it expires like on the 22nd. So I've got to rush and get that renewed which is always a fun thing, like going to the DMV. Uh, yeah, we're going to get some bigger sizes, decoy. I can do that. That's all in the plan. New, des new designs, everything. But I don't see anybody else having any other questions or anything like that, so I'm probably going to hop off here because I might go get on, stream on Twitch for a little while, play some video games, just kind of try to chill out and relax a little bit. And do that. Anyway, I, like I said, I wanted to, I wanted to get back in the swing of things and make sure that I still knew how to how to work all this equipment because it's been a while. We we will though. Like I said, I promise we're going to get back on the system of doing a live stream once a week. So you guys can start collecting your questions, getting them together, and we'll start doing the Q&A sessions again. And that's what I'm looking forward to about doing the live thing from now on because it's not really going to be a podcast because we do that three days a week now. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can get new episodes of the Steve Freeman podcast on YouTube. You can watch the video version or audio. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Radio.com, iHeartRadio, Google Play. One of the things I need you bastards to do is go to Apple Podcast and give it a five star, give it the five stars and write a review. Asking you motherfuckers to write a review is like asking you to slap your grandmother. But I'm asking you to slap your grandmother. Go to Apple, go to iTunes, it'll take you to Apple Podcast. For God's sake, write a couple positive words in there. It's not going to kill you. But I'm looking forward to just having, like, just like this. I don't know how long it'll ever last. Maybe 30 minutes, an hour, who knows? Maybe some will go for four hours, who knows? But uh, just having a, a BS session with you guys once a week just to answer questions, shoot the shit, and have fun hanging out with each other. So thanks for bearing with me tonight while I get my bearings back and learn how to work all the equipment again and do all of that. I appreciate it. What is today? Tasty. So yeah, new episode of the podcast tomorrow at noon. Noon Central, that is. The Steve Freeman Podcast. Guys, see you soon. I saw you dancing like